Maurice Mo Creek has played professionally for the Ukrainian Basketball Super League since 2019, and as recently as Sunday, he was trapped in Ukraine as Russia's invasion was well underway. Uh, thankfully, Mo Creek is safely back on American soil, and he joins us now. Mo, uh, first of all, welcome to BNC. Appreciate you. Appreciate you having me. And I see you have uh, your, your parents with you? Yes. Okay. Yes. So uh, hello to, to the Creeks. Uh, Mo is from Prince George's County, Maryland, just outside Washington, D.C. He just made it back home yesterday. So, Mo, what went through your mind when that plane was descending and you touched down? And has there ever been a time when you were more relieved to be home? I'm always going to be relieved to come home. Um, every single year that I come overseas, I'm always relieved that I'm home with my family and my friends and everything like that. Um, but I will say this one, this one takes the cake, you know. You go overseas to play basketball, um, do that for your, your job and for your family. And, you know, you got your people watching you, your friends watching you. And to uh, go into a war, um, it's difficult. So very few of us can understand what exactly you went through. Give us a rundown of events, if you uh, can, starting with when did you first realize this was going to be a desperate situation for you? Um... When I got to uh, the spot in Ukraine, Nikolai, uh, I didn't really think it was going to happen, you know, at first. But then um, as time started to reel on and, you know, you started to get media every day, um, and then you start hearing, like, the, uh, basically, like, from the Ukraine side and all that. It's just it's crazy to uh, have. And now, like, it may happen. So, you know, I just want to get out as soon as possible right now. Now you seem to uh, have a difficult time getting your team to understand how dire the situation was for you. What did you think they believed you were trying to do when you were simply trying to leave for your own safety? Uh, I don't know what they thought I was trying to do, but, you know, my life was on the line. So I was the guy on the phone with my agent and told him, like, I need to either find somewhere else to go or, you know, just, we need to do something to get out of the Ukrainian area. I mean, don't want to leave, but at the same time, my life is free. Now, we just uh, saw a video that you took from when you were on the bottom floor of your apartment complex in Ukraine, a bomb shelter. Uh, what was going through your mind, Mo, when you realized this had to be your reality until you were able to find a way to make it to the border? You know, I was just trying to stay safe as sound as possible. And, you know, so I'm just trying to stay away from the area of, uh, you know, what could possibly well, Sunday you tweeted that you had never felt so helpless. Uh, was there ever a point when you may have thought to yourself you might not make it out of Ukraine? Yeah, I definitely had my days. I definitely had my days where I felt like, you know, I was going to be here for a while, you know, and to have that feeling uh, uh, was destroying, it's destroying me, but, you know, Good fan base, good family, friends, all the people that prayed for me, supported me. That's what kept me alive as a, you know what I'm saying, as me being me, you know what I mean? I didn't have that strength. People gave me the strength, and, you know, I can't thank everybody enough for whoever, you know what I'm saying, for all the people that uh, wrote to me and, and messaged me and stuff like that, you know? And my family, of course, you know, they had to stay strong. It's hard, I know it's hard for them to stay strong knowing that, I could barely text them sometimes. I could, you know, sometimes I couldn't even reach them. I didn't have no service. You know, we didn't know it. Sometimes power uh, was getting cut out. Um, it's pitch dark at night. It was, it was a lot of things that we, I had to go through. So I, I couldn't do this alone. We see your loving parents right there with you. How would you describe the phone calls, the communication with your family when you were there trapped in that bomb shelter? Uh, it was tough to even get a phone call from the bomb shelter because, you know, it's no service. So I had to kind of peek up, go back down, get up stairs a little bit, go back downstairs. It was it was a tough road. It was a tough road. Now, uh, let's actually, since we have your parents here, uh, either for mom or dad, can you even begin to describe how difficult it was knowing that your your baby boy is so far away from home overseas and he is dealing with a, a situation that is life-threatening. I mean, how, how straining was it for you? Uh, how tough and difficult was it for you to 
know this reality every day, uh, not knowing what would happen to him? Um, the only way I can describe it is um, painful and helpless. There is a um, certain strength that men have and there is a bond that mothers have with their firstborn boys. And the ladies know what I'm talking about. I have three young men and I tell everybody I have some pretty amazing cats. But this one, his spirit is very incredible. Anybody who um, meet Maurice, if you ask anybody, they will tell you that he is just a good person. He has a kind heart. And as a mother, getting a text message saying, mom, I love you. And I knew I couldn't reach him. It crushed me. Um, my mental was going, my physical was just about done, but it was my spiritual glue that held everything together because I had to be strong for him so that he could get through what he was going through. I mean, he was in the middle of a war, a real life war and had nothing to protect him. Um, it is nothing that any parent ever would want for their child. So painful. I mean, just absolutely, we were devastated. We couldn't sleep, we couldn't eat. Um, we were trying to sleep in shifts and neither one of us were, was getting any sleep. So, um, and there's more, there's a lot more to this. I'll let Mike pick up on. You uh, no, just no, go ahead, sir. But no, just a devastating feeling to see him abandoned like that, you know, saying turn their back and leave you there, you know, to try to get out by yourself. It's devastating. Uh, you mentioned, uh, Pam, how Maurice has a certain strength and resolve, and I think it's clear to all of us that he gets it from you both. Uh, Pam, if you don't mind, give me a sense of what it was like to hold your child uh, when he touched down at Dulles International mm -hmm. Airport yesterday. Like this, like this, like this. And, and like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> it was amazing. Um, it just, because the FaceTime, you have the FaceTime, but you can't reach out and get them. You know, I wanted him and we couldn't get him. And just, they were teasing me in, at home last night. You know, mom, you were patting me down. I had to, you know, I needed to feel him. I needed to make sure he didn't have any holes in him. I knew it, but I needed to, as his mother, see it and feel it for myself. And then last night I thought, okay, now I can loose on, I can get some sleep and, you know, I got all three of my kids under one roof, right. which is great because that never really happens for us at all. And um, last night I went to bed. Well, before I went to bed, Maurice and I were upstairs together and I heard him in his room and I said, I call him Ree. He has a ton of nicknames though. But I called him Ree. So I said, Ree. And he said, Yes, mom. And I said, Oh, I didn't want anything. And then, like 30 minutes later, I said, Ree, yes, mom. I didn't want anything. I, I knew he was home, but I needed to know that I could just walk across the hall and just reach out and touch him. And then last night, I would lay down and I would get up and go in his room and look at him. Or I would touch him on his forehead, and then I would leave, lay down, but I still couldn't go to sleep. I went back and I did that all, all long. It, that just, he's here. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> I am going to be attached to his hip. I told his friends, if you need him, come here. I told him, you're not getting your car keys. I have both sets, so that's out of the question. If 
anybody leaves with you and they don't bring you back, they're going to get hunted down by me <laughs> and Big Papa. So um, I say read. <laughs> I go out and go like this. <laughs> I say read. The, the old headline. <laughs> yeah. So the, and we, clearly, there, the, there's because there is a much larger story, a much bigger piece to this puzzle. So anybody that, any producers, anybody that wants to write a book, hey, we're here. You want to talk? We're here. There's nothing like a parent's love. Uh, that is for sure. Uh, Mo, I read that it took you 12 hours to cross the border into Moldova. Uh, you waited in the line for over eight hours, and then it took you another nine hours to get to Romania, Romania before you touched down uh, at home last night. Um, last thing before we let you all go, uh, what will you take most from this experience, Mo? Um, <clears throat> I live life like it could be your last day. Um, I've always been a grateful person to everybody, anybody, everybody that I meet, if I know you or if I don't know you. Um, that's just how I was born and raised. You never know who you're going to meet. I met some amazing people in Ukraine. I had a brotherhood, a brother, a, a bond in Ukraine. And <clears throat> to leave that, um, that bond that I had with them guys, is it, it was, it's tough. You know what I mean? You go overseas, you play with guys for eight or nine months, and you don't know if you're coming back to those same guys. It's, it's tough to have. And, um, to have my season cut short because of a war that, you know, none of us want to be a part of, but for somebody else's gain and power that he, I guess, so desperately had to have, it's just something that I just can't never forget. You know what I mean? And there's still some guys over there that I know that may have to fight, you know what I mean? And I'm home with my family, but I feel sorry and, and like, I want to help them, you know, just try to get out because I know those are guys that I play with, who I battled with, who I fought, you know what I'm saying, who I fought with, you know what I mean? And it's just tough. It's just tough right now. So I guess my message is just be grateful every day because you never know when it could be your last day. And just uh, just stay positive and try to stay positive to the best of your ability. Your resolve is uh, obvious and admirable. Uh, Maurice Mo Creek and... Parents, um, we are so happy and relieved that uh, you're back home, Mo. Thanks for allowing us to borrow some of your time with your precious family. Thanks for joining us here on BNC. We appreciate it.